Hello, this is Hans van der Kwast, Senior Lecturer at IG Delft Institute for Water Education. In this video I'm going to demonstrate how to use hydrological tools from PC Raster in QGIS. Just a few, I will not cover all of them. And I'll start with uh, this downloaded SRTM digital elevation model, which has been uh, projected, but it's in uh, TIFF format, in GeoTIFF, and I'm going to convert it to the PC Raster format. The output data type is scalar, because these are continuous values, and I call the output DEM and make sure it has the extension .map so we can recognize it. Let's remove the TIFF file, not to get confused, because we'll further work with the MAP file. Most of these uh, hydrological tools use the local drain direction, which is a flow direction map, and we can create it using the LDD create tool, which has uh, many parameters. And um, let me uh, show you the documentation for the explanation of these parameters. And meanwhile, it can uh, run the tool that takes a little bit. So it is uh, basically combining the fill sinks algorithm to generate the flow direction. And the flow direction is then the result with the encoding uh, based on the numeric path of your keyboard. And these are the different parameters with which you can control the filling. And here you see some examples of the calculation. So if you just want to fill it completely, you use very high values like I do with the defaults here in the tool. When it's done, you will see this result and it has uh, for each uh, pixel the flow direction encoded in the values of the numeric path of your keyboard, which means 8 is north, 2 is south, etc. With LDD create DEM, you can make a corrected DEM, which is normally the result of the fill sinks algorithm. There are other tools like uh, LDD distance, where you can calculate distance uh, based on the flow direction instead of Euclidean distance. Um, but let's try some other tools. I'm going to calculate the stream order, which is the strala order, and the input is the drain direction. And I define the output, the file name Straler, calculate it. And there we see the result. You can style it. Here I use single web pseudo color, but it's uh, better to use palette with unique values because this is an ordinal result. Now I also want to calculate catchments and I use the pit tool for that. The input is the local drain direction and the output are the depressions that it finds in the elevation model, in the hydrologically corrected elevation model based on the LDD result. These are these points and uh, we can assume that these are outlets of uh, catchments. These points are also in an ordinal scale, they have uh, a unique number. And um, I can then use the catchment tool, use the LDD as an input, and the outlets that I have calculated from the pits tool as an input, and then I can calculate the catchments. I run the tool, and here the result is a nominal map with a unique value for each catchment that drains into those pits. You can also uh, accumulate the flow with the Accuflux operation. LDD is the input, but it needs a material layer. And I just want to uh, set uh, the material to a value of 1 for all cells. So I use the spatial tool to convert a value into a map which had that, uh, has that value for each cell. So I'm going to use a value of 1 and I want the scalar output. I use uh, a mask there, the catchments. Then I uh, give an output name which is uh, ones. So I have a map with only value 1 in it in scalar data type. Then I can go back to the Accuflux tool 
I can use the LDD and I use the ones so it will accumulate a value of one that is put on the uh, catchment or on the DEM and then following the flow direction it will accumulate uh, the values so basically it gives us uh, how many cells drain into a certain point and here we see the result with of course the largest accumulation in the river and you can determine the river from that another nice tool is the path tool it needs the LDD and it needs a point raster and then we can calculate the path of that point to the outlet and uh, I can define a point here make sure you are in a pen tool if you click right then you can copy the coordinate of that point and you can paste it in notepad and give it an ID number I call it uh, one Call it location and then I can use the column file to PC raster map tool and I use this location text file and I use a mask LDD and uh, I need it as a boolean so I declare it here as a boolean and I can then save it to a map file Click run. Let's style it. Here, Boolean 1, but it has missing values for all the other pixels in the area. And uh, I need zeros, so I'm going to use the cover tool. But the cover tool then needs another layer with the zeros. So I'm first going to make a layer with zeros spatial so zero and it needs to be boolean because our map needs to be boolean and i call this uh, zeros boolean and then i can use the cover tool and then i can uh, use as an input the uh, location layer and then I cover all the missing values with the zeros from zeros boolean and I save it then to the name location boolean which will have zeros and ones the existing ones and the added zeros and here we see that it has zeros and ones the only pixel with a one is very small so we can't really see it so it would be good to use the spread max zone tool for that to make it a bit visible but then i need another uh, zeros because it needs the zeros as a scalar and not as a boolean otherwise it wouldn't work So I use here as the points locations boolean, the initial friction is zero scalar and the friction layer are the ones which are also scalar and then uh, let's try a value and see if it becomes uh, visible, let's use 500 to start with, doesn't look like I can see it, maybe I need to make it a bit bigger, so make sure that all the inputs are correctly chosen and I use now a maximum distance of a kilometer and now I can see uh, the point which was otherwise not so visible only when we zoom in we can see it somewhere and what I'm going to do now is to use the path tool from this point to the outlet to uh, find its path to the outlet. So we'd use a LDD and then the, the location Boolean. And I call the output path to outlet. Run it. 
and there we see it. Let's change the styling a bit. It's boolean, so I use palette of unique values. I remove the zeros, and then I can uh, combine it with um, the DEM. And then I can see the path over the landscape. So all water from that point will go to the outlet via this path. So all these tools can also be used in the graphical modeler and uh, combined with other QGIS tools. So this was just a quick demo to show you what you can do with uh, the hydrological tools from PC Raster in QGIS.